So today we'll be taking a look at some stories regarding Lana, Roman Reigns, and much more. Let's start things off with the Lana news. What's happening there? As it's been known for several days now, CJ Perry, formerly known as Lana in WWE, was released from the company recently. Lana's release, and basically everyone else's release from that entire list, all came as a surprise to everyone. Lana's husband, Miro, is obviously having a lot of success in AEW right now, but Lana remained in WWE and really gave it her all to perfect her craft and improve in every way possible in the ring, which she absolutely did. Lana 2017 vs Lana 2021 in the ring are two completely different people. She truly put the time in, and you can see just how much she improved watching her first few matches compared to her last few matches in WWE. Natalia has even vouched for Lana in recent interviews as well, saying that instead of taking time off and going home, Lana would spend hours training with Natalia in their free time. She was serious about improving and even having a goal of becoming women's champion. Lana was originally set for a decent push in late 2020. Not in the world title picture, but reports at the time kept mentioning that WWE had big plans for her. Lana going through the table for nine weeks straight was part of those weird plans. There's still some mixed reports on the whole table story. It was apparently supposed to build an underdog narrative for Lana and get fans to root for her. But with it happening nine times straight, reports were also speculating that someone backstage had to be getting a kick out of it, so that's why it happened so much. There was a little payoff where Lana had the opportunity to put Nia Jax through a table and get her revenge. Lana was also the sole survivor at Survivor Series, picking up the win for Team Raw, so she had a lot of great moments sprinkled in there. All of that was supposed to be topped off with Asuka and Lana winning the WWE Women's Tag Team titles at TLC. The match was set, the build-up was there, they were the number one contenders. So what happened after that? Well, Lana was attacked on Raw by Shayna and Nia and was written off with a leg injury. It wasn't a real injury, just a storyline-related injury to pull Lana from that match. The reason why they pulled Lana out was because Charlotte Flair was cleared to return, so they replaced Lana for Charlotte. Asuka and Charlotte would end up actually winning the tag team titles at TLC, stealing what was supposed to be Lana's moment. So Charlotte's return really derailed Lana's direction and seemed to have Lana in a state of limbo and being lost in the shuffle. Lana would disappear for a few months but would re-emerge by forming a new tag team with Naomi. Everyone thought that maybe Lana and Naomi would climb their way to being tag team champions, but that never happened either. Lana and Naomi had a match together on Raw recently and several days later, Lana was cut. It's being reported that Lana was allegedly promised that they would still have big plans and directions for her character after Charlotte's return sort of threw everything off her tracks. But now that Lana is gone, and if that was actually promised to her, we can now see it was a lie. Lana never really got anything going after Charlotte replaced her at TLC. There was no standout moments for Lana after that fake leg injury at all, which is very unfortunate. WWE's network special of Lana also gave a behind-the-scenes look at what she was going through and made fans respect Lana even more, and they never really capitalized on the success of that network special. So what's next for Lana? Well, the answer is simple. It seems to be the answer for a lot of ex-WWE talents nowadays. But that answer is AEW. Now, it's a heated debate online in the wrestling community. And that's the question of, is AEW picking up too much former WWE talent? Everyone had their opinions on that question, and it's been a heated topic recently, especially with the new signings of Mark Henry and Andrade. But the answer is quite simple when you really think about it. The older talent, such as Sting, Paul White, and Mark Henry, were likely signed since they were big names in wrestling and bring attention. The younger talent, such as Miro, Andrade, and others, were likely signed because they're still in the primes of their career and extremely talented at what they do. Miro recently mentioned Lana on AEW as well, and a lot of people understood that mention as him trying to get Lana through the door at AEW. As we've been seeing recently, Lana's passion has become wrestling. So if she wants to keep that going, what better place than to reunite with Miro on AEW? 
What do you think Lana's next move should be? Is there a strict rule that WWE has to follow for Roman Reigns' usage? That's what the rumor has been in recent weeks. Obviously, we know what Roman Reigns' character is about and things that he says. His character is very vocal about how he likes to be used on SmackDown. Roman Reigns either opens the show or closes the show. There's no in-between for Roman Reigns. If he's not featured in the main event segment for SmackDown one week, chances are that he'll likely open up that edition of SmackDown. That seems to be the new unofficial rule when it comes to Roman Reigns, such as Backlash, for example. Reports claim that WWE Champion match between Bobby Lashley, Drew McIntyre, and Braun Strowman was all set to close out and main event the Backlash special event. Well, according to reports, that's when someone backstage started pointing out the fact that Roman Reigns and Cesaro should main event the show. WWE would eventually make the change and put Roman Reigns back in the main event. And even before Backlash, Roman Reigns had always had the main event spot over the WWE title. There's been a few occasions where Roman Reigns didn't main event the show, such as TLC, where Orton and The Fiend's Inferno match closed out the show. But that was obviously a special occasion, considering the fact that they wanted to go off air with a burning fiend in the ring. So that makes sense, but besides those very few occasions, the new Roman Reigns rule seems to be in full effect. It looks like from this point on, Roman Reigns won't be walking out for a segment in the middle of SmackDown or wrestling in the middle of a pay-per-view event. Roman Reigns is either going to open the show or close it. That seems to be it. As far as Roman Reigns' SmackDown storyline goes, there seems to be a big update. Some fans were expecting Jimmy to be Roman's next challenger, but it now looks like that guess is wrong. Reports are saying that all signs seem to point to Rey Mysterio as the next challenger for Roman Reigns. That challenger also makes a lot of sense for Roman Reigns. Rey Mysterio is a legendary superstar that's also a credible threat to Roman Reigns. Rey Mysterio has done the impossible before and nearly defeated Brock Lesnar for the WWE title just a few years ago. So he's definitely credible enough for Roman Reigns. Not to mention that Rey Mysterio has a reason to go after Roman Reigns now, after Roman attacked him and Dominic during the tag team match. Rey Mysterio probably wants to go after Roman Reigns for that brutal attack Roman gave on him and his son. What better way to get back at Roman Reigns than attempting to dethrone him as Universal Champion at the same time? So, there's definitely a lot of story to touch on there. The list of challengers for Roman Reigns is getting a bit thin after he defeated a long list of superstars. But Roman may have at least three opponents lined up. Rey Mysterio, maybe something with Jimmy down the line, and there's been some rumors of John Cena at SummerSlam. So the champ could have his hands full here over these next few months. But what are your thoughts on today's stories? Do you think Lana was lied to? And what are your thoughts on this new apparent Roman Reigns rule? Leave your comments, don't forget to subscribe, and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys.